Hi, welcome to another video from SQL Maestros and this is part 2 of uh, CX packet weight type and SQL Server parallelism. Now just a few days back I recorded a video trying to show what CX packet weight type is and how it works inside SQL Server, the SQL Server parallelism concept and after posting that video I got a lot of questions so it was amazing people liked the video and I got a lot of questions. So I thought uh, to answer many of those questions, why not record part two? So in fact, the uh, first video was not really called as part one, but now after recording this video, um, I'm going to go and change that CX packet video title to part one, and this then becomes part two. So if you are watching this video without really watching part one, I will strongly recommend that you should first go and watch part one and then come to part two. Uh, that will make a lot of sense. So what really uh, did I do in part one? In part one, I was trying to show a very simple query that was being parallelized by SQL Server because uh, the cost threshold of parallelism in SQL Server is uh, set to a very low value by default. It is five. And I tried to show that you should increase that value to something like 30, 35, 40, or even maybe 50 to begin with so that many trivial uh, queries and workloads that really can run very well in on a single thread really don't need multiple threads and then um, SQL Server will not parallelize them because cost threshold of parallelism is going to be higher than the actual query cost and they will run on single thread and um, CX packet wait time will come down considerably and I tried to uh, show that demo as to what really is the execution time, the run time, the uh, optimizers evaluation of execution plan performance, a lot of that stuff. So you should go and watch that part one. Now, what am I doing in part two? So some of the questions that uh, came uh, were, uh, you know, I was running that workload in a very quiescent SQL Server uh, installation, which means when I was doing that demo for the video, uh, there was no workload running. So SQL Server very happily uh, took eight threads because uh, my uh, demo VM is using eight cores. So it used one thread per core and, and very beautifully parallelized the, uh, the query. So some of the questions came that is it going to be the same when there is workload or parallelism or actual query execution is more dynamic and SQL Server may decide to take less or more threads depending on the current workload on the database engine. So in order to answer uh, those questions and how uh, reducing parallelism may make sense for many workloads. I wanted to record this uh, video and in this video I'm actually going to run a uh, lot of workloads on uh, SQL Server and then run the demo query again uh, to show that to you. So before uh, we uh, uh, jump into uh, the demo, I want all of you uh, to subscribe to this uh, exclusive uh, distribution list that I have uh, which is connect with AB. So that's the short URL uh, bit.ly slash connect with AB. Uh, so the background is that this exclusive uh, list of subscribers was only um, open to my, uh, you know, attendees and, and um, participants from SQL Maestro's master classes or hackathons and even SQL Maestro's ac accelerators and international delegates who have been attending my pre-cons all over the world. So this list was uh, only open to them. But um, I decided that today if you are watching this video and if you like the content, you are also one of uh, my attendees in some way or the other, though I don't know you personally, but you're watching this. So it's great and you're learning something. So when you're learning something from my content, from my videos, from my uh, classes, uh, you should also be part of this list. So Feel free, this is not publicly um, uh, given out anywhere um, and it is only available to people who are actually learning from my content through whichever source or medium uh, it is. And I will, I generally uh, send just, um, let's say two emails a month and not more than that, uh, trying to give out a lot of content to people who are subscribers to this list. So this is a, a very exclusive list. Uh, again, it is bit.ly slash connect with AB there okay friends so let's go and uh, jump into demo uh, this is part two and again please watch part one first and come to this demo for part two so let's get right into the demo 
Let's first see how many threads we have in SQL Server. So we are using this DMV select count star um, from sys.dmos threads. And I will click on execute to get the count. The count is 128. So there are currently 128 threads uh, with this uh, with the database engine right now. And if I go to the query, which I also used in uh, part one of the of the demo that I was talking about uh, in Adventure Works, so we have this table sales order detail, and we do a select star and do and we execute an order by line total. So a simple query. Uh, actual execution plan is turned on and because cost threshold is set to the default value of 5 which is low when you execute this it just takes about a second or two uh, about three seconds there to complete and let's go to the execution plan and you can clearly see a parallel plan and when I take the cursor over cluster index um, seek there and if I expand the actual number of rows and you can clearly see that uh, uh, the zoom in is it working fine there okay and you can see that now there are uh, multiple threads eight threads to be precise that are being used there and thread zero is the controller thread so now in in this when i was doing all this and if you look at the task manager you can see the cpu uh, is relatively um, at, at a at a very in a very decent mode right now there's uh, hardly any cpu usage uh, the few spikes that you see is when i actually ran the query and now it's pretty quiescent pretty nice so uh, as i said this part two is inspired by many questions that i was getting that how will sql server really behave when there is uh, a huge amount of data workload that is coming in and the cpu is busy and there are a lot of threads and then will sql server still assign eight threads because it's supposed to be very dynamic query execution uh, so yeah let's uh, let's try to get some answers to uh, those questions but mind you the point still is that we because it's a continuation to my part one demo and the and the crux is to avoid uh, that excessive parallelism uh, to reduce the cx packet wait time so that still remains the key thing key point that i want to make uh, so let's go and uh, now i am going to run this uh, uh, query this workload i'm going to add 200 threads so now I will double click on this. I'm going to use RML utilities to spin off 200 threads. And now if you see task manager uh, and observe all the eight cores are being utilized up to their max and, and the utilization is pretty sitting pretty nicely at, oops, sorry there, uh, sitting nicely at 100% utilization. If you observe there, all CPUs are being used. If I go to uh, Management Studio and run the first query there to see the count of thread again, earlier it was 128 and we should expect, of course, more than uh, 200, 250, maybe close to 300 or something now because we have just spun off 200 threads. So now the count is 314. So SQL Server is very busy, right? Threads are struggling. Threads are fighting with each other for their CPU slice, for their CPU time. All that is happening now, right? And you can see CPU is choked to 100%. See this there. Now, the final uh, part of the demo is let's go and run this query again. And this is going to be parallelized. And let's see how much time it takes for this to execute and how many threads will SQL Server give it. And I click on execute now there. So while SQL Server is under heavy workload, it is under heavy pressure. How will this execution behave? Okay, so data is still coming the query is still executing as you can see so what we need to see is how much time it takes and now of course it's taking a lot more time earlier if you remember it took just three seconds and now it's taking quite a bit of time because there are only eight cores and there are so many threads to be served uh, in totality those 200 threads that are co continuously doing something and then we have threads for this workload there, may, there are a lot of background threads that are running there is uh, each each of those threads need cpu time so the quantum here is four milliseconds each thread will go and um, take four milliseconds and then uh, uh, go off the cpu save its thread stack go and line up in the runnable queue again and then when it gets its uh, its turn again it will come back and start running again so that's the kind of circle that keeps happening and it just continues to take a uh, lot of time now 
And remember, this workload is uh, earlier ran with eight threads as a parallel query. Uh, let's see how much time and how many threads it will take now. So of course, let's go and look into the task manager. Yeah, it's pretty, ex pretty tough, pretty hard. CPU utilization is sitting at 100% now. It's all going on, it's all happening. And how much time is it really going to take? It's going, it's now one minute, 30 seconds. And now while this is running, I can go and have a cup of coffee. And by the time I come back, I hope the execution will be done. So it's up to you. Uh, what, what do you want to do while I have a cup of coffee? So the best thing to do here is actually to stop the video recording because I don't know how much time it's going to take. It might take three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, maybe even more. And then I can come back and then show it this to you again, how much time it has taken. So yeah, so it's about two minutes, something it's still running. So I think I should go and uh, pause the recording for the moment. So let me pause and I will come back again. So I'm hitting the pause button at two minute 30th second, 78, 29. Okay, so I am back and we see that this has taken about, about eight minutes to complete. And uh, let me zoom in a bit here to show that to you. And as we go down on the, on the status bar, there you go. And something that took three seconds has taken eight minutes now. So this is pretty amazing. And the idea is very simple. Uh, there are 200 threads already running and CPU is choked. Each thread is waiting for its time slice and they're competing with each other for CPU time. And there is that much stress on SQL Server. And now when you run this query and let's go into the execution plan for this execution, which has taken eight minutes to complete. If you get into clustered index and expand uh, the actual number of rows, you can see again, eight threads are being used. So SQL Server, irrespective of whatever the workload and the pressure is still lands up using the number of threads equal to the number of cores that are there. And as per my understanding goes, it can go up to a max maximum of 64 threads uh, per execution. So, and of course, each thread here could uh, be waiting for its own time slice with the CPU and, and all these eight threads are, are uh, competing with the other threads that are running. And then that delays the execution so very much. But there is one more thing that uh, needs to be considered here is that the total time that we have seen, which is about eight minutes, is not the only time it has uh, spent on CPU. It is, uh, it is the total elapsed time, which means the time the threads have spent on CPU, uh, running the uh, uh, query, getting processing the data, and also the amount of time it has taken uh, to render the data in SQL Server Management Studio, because SMS here is a client and, and the data has been rendered. So it has taken that much time. So we're talking about the threads uh, spending time on CPU, which is the CPU time, and then the amount of time it has taken to render the data. So that's the total elapsed time of about um, eight minutes. Uh, but yes, the crux here is that there was load on SQL Server and there was that was pretty intensive and still SQL Server has decided uh, to use, uh, consume eight threads uh, for that uh, trivial uh, query. So that was one of the questions that I wanted to answer through this uh, demo. So uh, yes, of course, do uh, watch part one and then come back to part two to understand the entire thing in uh, totality. And that should be the end of demo in this CX packet part two with parallelism. Hope many more questions were answered with this uh, demo and please again watch part one and part two together. And if you're watching this demo and you liked it, do share it with your friends and colleagues. And also, um, as I said before, thank you very much. Hope this video was worth your time. See you soon in another video.